So what will the president's blueprint reveal about the U.S. economic future? Joining me to answer that question, we have Ernest Istook. He is a former Republican member of Congress from Oklahoma, currently a distinguished fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Also with us, Isabel Sawhill, a senior fellow in economic studies at the Brookings Institution, a former associate director at the Office of Management and Budget. They join us both uh, from Washington, D.C. Uh, Isabel Sawhill, can you give us a little bit of detail in terms of the difference between income inequality as one theme and economic growth as another theme as part of the president's economic message. Well, I think what the president is going to talk about and what people want to hear is how we restore uh, economic growth that benefits everyone. In other words, we need a more widely shared prosperity. Uh, we need an economy that works for the middle class and not just for the well-off. And so I think you're going to hear a lot about that uh, theme tonight. Uh, I think that inequality is not uh, a theme that resonates as much with the American public as the whole idea of opportunity, of climbing the ladder, of having uh, chances that uh, maybe your parents didn't have to do better in life. One of the things, though, that I think is happening in America is that as the rungs of the ladder get further apart, in other words, as we get more inequality, uh, mobility is uh, affected by that. And we now have new research that shows that we don't have as much mobility in the United States as many other advanced countries have. So we're not as much the land of opportunity as we'd like to think. Ernest Istook, uh, come in on the topic of uh, campaigns, because uh, the president's speech tonight, of course, part of the uh, campaign cycle that is going to take place. Of course, the Republican uh, presidential primary on January the 31st. How much of a campaign speech is this, and how will that change the subject matter? Well, the very selection of main topics to say, oh, the big issue is income inequality, not the problem of jobs. And upward mobility has certainly been harmed by the government with a level of regulation and restrictions that suppress the economy, such as we've, uh, we've witnessed more dramatically during the years of Obama's presidency than any other time. So trying to change it to, quote, income inequality is changing the subject. Just go back to the Bible. Look at all the teachings of Jesus where he said, you're always going to have the poor, you're always going to have the rich. This is not a new issue. This is not something that has sprung up in 21st century America. This is taking an age-old situation and trying to elevate it as a political issue to distract attention away from the job and growth killing policies that we have under the Obama administration. So if you look at it, uh, what is it? 70%, that's 70, 70% of the personal income taxes in the federal government are paid by only 10% of the people. We've got 50% of the people not paying any taxes at all. And yet the president is going to say the problem is disparity uh, in that. He's going to probably trot out Warren Buffett's secretary. But the reason that Warren Buffett paid a lower tax rate than his secretary is because he gave away $22 million and thereby reduced his, uh, his gross income and his taxable income by giving away $22 million to lower his tax rate. I applaud him for doing that. But this whole thing is a flimsy construct trying to divert attention away from the fact that President Obama's policies are making unemployment worse. They're making economic growth, growth worse. They are the reasons that, uh, as the lady said, rungs may seem to be getting farther apart on the ladder. Taxing other people more doesn't fix anything. It just appeals to jealousy. Isabel, if you can, tell us a little bit about energy policy, because the president is expected to talk about domestic energy production and how that is also linked to job creation. Well, I think that he will do that, and I think that the uh, availability of a lot more natural gas than we earlier thought uh, will be part of that, and I think it will be... Uh, an attempt to make sure that the public understands that he is in favor of more domestic energy production. Ernest Istook, give you about 15 seconds here. Domestic energy okay. production linked to jobs. Energy production is higher. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just build the Keystone Pipeline and you'll get a lot of jobs out of that. Open up federal lands. Energy production is up 
on oil and gas production on private property. On federal property, it's down 40 percent because of the restrictions from the Obama administration. Yet, uh, as, as the lady said, we've got plenty if we would just explore for it. We've got a 200-year supply of oil and gas reserves in the United States if we could just tap into it. The jobs would be incredible. The money going overseas would dry up because we could produce our own energy. Uh, so President right. Obama is trying to restrict oil and gas at the same time he claims credit for it. Uh, subsidies for other things, that won't help. We've got to await uh, the president's speech tonight. So I want to thank you very much, Ernest Istook from, the, uh, from the Heritage Foundation and also Isabel Sawhill uh, from the Brookings Institute.